Time now uh, for Mark Meets, in which I speak to the biggest names in the world of politics, showbiz, sport, business and beyond. Tonight, Neil Parrish, a British farmer and politician, not a set of job titles you often hear together. Uh, Neil served as Member of Parliament for Tiverton and Honiton from 2010. As a member of the Conservative Party, he was previously a member of the European Parliament for South West England, and he chaired the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs Select Committee from 2015 until his resignation from the House of Commons after admitting watching pornography in the chamber. His departure triggered a by-election which was won by the Liberal Democrats. In an interview with LBC in June of this year, Neil said that he had experienced suicidal thoughts after the incident and thought the police had very kindly and rightly confiscated his guns so he wouldn't act on those dark thoughts. Well, I'm pleased to say that after a very challenging time, Neil Parrish has reflected on his poor judgment and his behaviour and has moved on from this, rebuilt his life and is now a highly in-demand commentator on all matters politics. And he's happy to talk about farming too. Neil Parrish, welcome to the show. And thank you very much, Mark, for having me on. Listen, I think you got out of the Commons at exactly the right time. <laughs> There's part of me that says, uh, you know, I, I went through a coalition government, I went through a, a small majority, then a minority government with, with Theresa May, which we every night we tried to get a, a deal through on Brexit, remember? And my, and my, my, my constituents used to say, you should have voted for that. Well, I did. I voted for every combination to get us out, but we couldn't. And, and now my colleagues are facing in the House of Commons something horrendous because naturally... You know, Liz Truss built herself up into this, you know, new Margaret Thatcher. She was not for turning. And, of course, the trouble is she's had to turn. Um, and now, you know, our economy and, and our, we're being run and dominated by the markets. Um, and she's having to U-turn. Um, and I think that's going to be her biggest problem. Uh, we could debate, you know, the mini budget to death. It's been uh, obviously uh, analysed to within an inch of its life. Uh, what's your view of her political judgment in the last few days? I think actually firing her, her chancellor. I mean, I think, you know, it's no good. Quasi, he actually did her bidding uh, as well as his own bidding. And I think this idea that you can dispense with your chancellor um, and then I can carry on as prime minister. Remember when David Cameron left after the referendum? Mm. He went partly because the party was going to have George Osborne's head on a platter, only only metaphorically speaking. Um, and, so, and so um, I wouldn't possibly comment. But um, like I said, that's why David Cameron went as well. And, and I think this is her problem. And I think, you know, Boris was almost considered to be too loyal to, to his yes. ministers. I mean, that was his uh, great weakness, is that he couldn't fire people. No, exactly. Even where, Matt Hancock, when he was caught on CCTV. Where, whereas I think, you know... A crime, by the way, far more egregious than yours, in my view. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think once you've admitted your, you know, your sins and, and, and you've resigned, I think you, you live with it and you, you move on. So, like I said, I, I don't want to make judgment on others. Others can make judgment on me. So I think it's key now, I think, you know, if Liz Truss is to survive, uh, she's got to raise her game because, I mean, today's conference, uh, press conference, was just horrendous. I watched it uh, on my phone um, and it was horrendous um, because, you see, there was no... You see, if she was a Margaret... Thatcher, and Margaret would have come out with some real sort of, you know, gut things. Um, there is nothing in there for, for Liz Truss because she's not a true right winger, and, and that's the problem. And she, she was dressed in black and she cut, cut the figure of somebody attending her own funeral. It was like a wake, wasn't it? Uh, my concern was that she didn't own it, that she didn't own the mini budget, she didn't own the fact that this budget was, was the creation of herself and, and quasi quarting as you've suggested, mm. um, that she hasn't owned this agenda. Uh, she's neither fish nor fowl now because she's mm. not going to have this low, these low tax uh, policies, at least in relation to corporation tax and the uh, upper rate. So, um, you know, policy-wise, she's, she's all over the shop. And she doesn't seem now to have that conviction in her eyes that suggests she can keep leading. You see, the thing is, too, it, she was the one who created this persona. This was the whole idea of a new government to actually, you know, reduce taxes uh, and actually change what the Conservatives were doing. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, she's had to completely reverse all of that. So, you know, those right-wingers who, who put her on... Because don't forget, she only just got on to the, to the ballot for leadership. Um, and that was put on by, by the right 
of the party. And her performance was sluggish in the early rounds. Exactly. Mm. And so therefore, you see, they were expecting the Liz Trust that came out fighting um, and this new policy that came forward. Now, you see, those right-wingers that supported her don't like what she's done in the U-turns. Mm. At, at the other MPs didn't support her in the first place. And that's why, you know, facing the House of Commons and the party, I think it was Winston Churchill, didn't he? He said, over there are my opponents, behind me are my enemies. Well, I mean, as Liz Truss actually, you know, stands. If she's there next Wednesday, um, she will know that behind her are not exactly enemies, but they are people now who actually fear for their own seats. And also, you know, we must remember that people are suffering for cost of living crisis, all of these things. They're, they're worried about making ends meet. They're worried about their mortgages going up. Because don't forget, some of the effects of the markets have actually driven mortgage rates up and people are worried. I mean, somebody who actually looks and helps us in the house. She bought her own council house. She's facing higher interest rates. She's very worried. Um, everybody's worried. It's not just top earners. It's everybody who's now worried about where we're going. Well, I think today was the day the music died because I watched, I watched the uh, press conference as well. I was expecting a bravura performance. I think she's been quite good at PMQs since she became prime minister. I think her first outing was very impressive. And I think she, she beats Keir Starmer. Um, but she had a haunted look in her eyes. Uh, she looks like she's had the wind knocked out of her sails. And uh, I, I actually just don't know where she goes from here. I mean, Jerry Hayes, ex-Tory MP, suggesting she could be out by Sunday or even early next week. Do you think she's currently considering her position? I think she will if enough people go to see her. Mm. Um, we don't know. There's always rumours about how many letters have gone into the 1922 committee. Um, only Graham Brady, so Graham Brady will know that. Um, and I suspect probably not as many uh, as is rumoured. Mm. But I think in the end, you see, if you can't actually up your game and drive the party forward and the country forward, have confidence that the markets will actually lend this country the money it needs to pull us through. Um, and of course, you see, the problem she had with her unfunded tax cuts was she didn't come clean with her MPs as to where the public spending was going to be cut. And of course, what's happened is she knows full well from the chief whip that she cannot get those cuts through. Mm. And that is why she's in the position she's in. She's caught between, you know, a, a, a rock and a hard place. Which is a it? political misjudgment, because I mean, I think there, there are sound economic arguments for that mini budget. Yeah. It's just that it needed the approval and the uh, sign off of the Office for Budget Responsibility. That didn't happen. It was a perfect storm, really, wasn't it? They wanted to quickly yeah. announce energy support for household energy That's bills. Right. Um, and that, and that, 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 and that, was, was, that was, that was right. the right thing to do. But then yeah. with that, they thought, oh, let's have the full budget and let's um, let's you know skip the OBR and we'll, we'll they'll catch up with our figures. But you, but you see, work. she mm. chose. She made a big thing of actually ignoring the Office of Budget Responsibility, of, of, of ignoring the Bank mm. of England. And yes, they can be too pessimistic. Let's be blunt. Yeah. Um, but but their modelling has not always been accurate. not always been accurate. No, uh, but, Bank but, of England asleep at the wheel with inflation. Yeah. But you see, there's no. It's no good actually. Then having sort of taken them on, then having to go. You know, the, the quasi had to go, didn't he? Back and act actually talk to the Office of Budget Responsibility, having ignored them. Um, you know, we have got to now find out exactly how we're going to balance the books. All of these things are now actually taking place, but after the event. Now, let's imagine you're in the House of Commons and uh, you're not watching anything racy on your phone. You're attending uh, to the political moment. Um, what would you be, what would your thoughts be and what would your actions be? Would you be submitting a letter to Graham Brady? Probably not just at this stage, because I think um, we have got to see where she will finally land. Mm. But I think the problem we've got is that, you see, what will happen with the MPs, unless she can up her game, unless we can get that real drive there as to where it's going to take us. Mm. You know, MPs are venal in the end. They are very worried about their own seats, and naturally so. Um, and in the meantime, like I said, the country is worrying about about how they're going to survive the winter. You know, I want to see more food produced in this country. I want yeah. to see a good environment. Absolutely. All of these things You've that we've always fought been a for. a great champion yeah, for the countryside. And, and, you know, and, and having good, healthy food with good animal welfare. You know, these are the things that people want to be able to afford food, afford energy, um, and they don't want... The, see, the Tory party at the moment, all we're doing is, is talking to ourselves. Um, and meanwhile, the country is suffering. And the trouble is, you know, when the election comes... I mean, I... 
right, don't begin. I was a local councillor between 92 and 97, district council and county council. And when I went round, people said, we like you, Neil, you do a good job, but we're not voting Conservative. Um, and you see, every MP between 92 and 97 had a different idea of how to run the government, right? Well, when it came to the general election, most of them lost, irrespective of what position they took. And if the MPs, you know, and the party doesn't pull itself round, the public will be merciless, and why shouldn't they be if we're not fit to govern? We still can be fit to govern. We can still make it. Because as you rightly said in this programme, the Labour Party will spend more, borrow more, but the Tory party at the moment, we're not really showing our true colours, are we? And, and who are we? What are we? And, and I ask that, you know, in, in, in all sincerity, because, you know, would, could you describe what the Tory party is at the moment? And can the public actually understand where we're going? And I'm getting a lot of emails from viewers saying they would like a new political party that's properly conservative. So that's a conversation for another day. Um, you made a mistake, a misjudgment, and I know that you've been on a journey with that. I was shocked to hear that you had suicidal thoughts. How is your mental health now? Um, have you got closure with what happened earlier this year? I have, actually, and I think the last sort of few weeks in particular, um, I've accepted, you know, the mistakes that I made. Mm. Um, I don't want to remake them. I want to actually help with, you know, fair share delivering food that most need it, with the environment, with agriculture, all of those things <laughs> that I've been involved with all of my life through the European Parliament mm. and through Parliament. And so, you know, I want to be able to offer things to people that I hope that can be helpful help people um, and I hope they can forgive me for what I did and I need to get on because I've still got a lot in my brain where I feel that I can be useful to society and especially those that need it most. Uh, most certainly. Uh, I wish you well and I hope you'll come back and see us again soon. I like coming on GB News. I like the debate. I've been very interested this evening watching it all uh, before I came on. Um, you've been quite kind to me. I did wonder what was going to happen uh, where there was full-scale debates going on just now, not that I probably could have joined in if I needed to. So